Hello fellow glass mapper fans, just want to give you a quick demo of edit frames and what this little piece of wrapping code actually does. So normally with edit frames when you click on these things it'll pop up this little ribbon and then you gotta click the cubes and that'll then pop up a dialog with whatever um, fields that you've got set in there. Same with all of these. Uh, we've added a little wrapper uh, around these just to float these to the top right and then show these little icons but you know you're clicking this button and then you got to click this ex ex secondary button but really it's just an additional click which is like hell no why the hell am I doing this right this little bit of code so you can just click the button directly and boom open straight up very very simple this allows you to have multiple buttons as well. Again, it's just very, very quick if you need to get different fields up and edited. You can see the different icons, you can see the different bits of text, and again, you can just add in some extra little widgets and it will just work as you'd expect it to straight off the bat. It's a little demo of this on the in CodePen. You can have a look at this, play around with the HTML, see how this is working in terms of just static, static uh, mapping and stuff. And it uses Font Awesome for the icons. And as you can see, there's a lot of icons here. So pick them as you wish. The way this actually works is just uses a bit of JavaScript in the background, which I'll show you in a second. But if you take a look at the Sitecore code that's generated and you open up the Chrome data, you'll see the piece of code. And what normally happens is when you click on those cubes, it will actually trigger this click action in the commands, which has all the details for the edit frame or what to open and the fields, etc. So the way I've worked this is I've created an extra HTML helper uh, extension method on the helper and check if it's a page editor and if it's if it is then we go ahead and take some take uh, set up some defaults and then we inject in our our own div class around the site core uh, around the glass edit frame so here is our glass edit frame and then we're just closing off our div additionally if you have the multiple icons showing we need to wrap that in a a different edit frame wrapper which I'll show you in a second and just just to be able to apply different styles normally in use normally in the glass mapper using glass mapper you'd have to show you you'd use this begin edit frame syntax but the problem is this text would show unless you wrap it with this check as well so what we can now do is simply just do this and then we can pass in whatever set of fields we want simple as that no using statements no additional wrapping bits of code and if we want to show multiple icons, we can wrap it in our own using statement for the edit frame wrapper. And then we can have these multiple uh, declarations for the edit frame and each individual button. The CSS is fairly simple. You can see we've got our import for the font awesome CSS file from uh, the bootstrap CDN. Um, take a look, it's nothing too amazing happening. Uh, the slightly more interesting but not that complex code is in the JavaScript. All we're doing is on in our function we're checking if the edit frame if it's a wrapped edit frame button and then on we're attaching an on click handler. Within that handler we're parsing out the JSON that I showed you earlier that Sitecore itself generates and then we're just running an eval on the click uh, click command and then stopping that propagation so that we handle it and it doesn't then go off to site core doing it 
Yes, we're attaching a, an additional class here, and you can see the knot here. This is so that uh, it doesn't attach multiple times uh, when we insert a, another uh, rendering into the into uh, our page because we are hijacking the site core uh, insert rendering function in the JavaScript. Uh, we're just triggering our glass edit frame handler function here. Uh, I wrote a blog post, my last one, on extending site core JavaScript files and it was for this reason that I investigated this. And we've also got an observe function on the uh, observe uh, subscriber on the onload function. Uh, this is uh, we could just use a document dot ready, but we're in cycle territory, so hey, why not? Uh, give me any uh, feedback, or if you're if you're using it, then let me know. 